This is a Milwaukee hole saw bit named Hole Dozer. Yes, it's proudly made in the United States and I like supporting the local industry. In this video I'd like to point out some of its design features as well as some of its limitations as well. At the moment the hole saw bit is mounted in a drill press vertically down. I will take it out after the measurement and is connected to a dial gauge or dial indicator to measure runout. Runout is a measurement that will tell me about the circularity of the whole saw bit. Circularity means I'm checking how close is it to a perfect circle. If it's a perfect circle indeed then this needle will not budge because as it rotates around that needle will not move. If it's not circular, it's somewhat of an oval shape. That needle will show you where the high point is in an oval and will show you where the low point is in an oval. I set the bit to a height where it's going to run across on this bridge here in the side of it. So it's going to run smoothly around. There is a weld line, this is how it's constructed, that runs on the body. It's white painted, it's difficult to see, so a weld line runs through there and on the weld bead we have a small hump. So ignore that little bit of bump there in the body. Let's start in the middle of the W and let me rotate you a little bit so you can see the numbers on the dial gauge there let's start at zero there so if we get back to the middle of the W there in the word Milwaukee and end up at zero that means that the measurement is consistent and the dial indicator did not move away or any other uh, thing is not skewing the numbers or the readouts that we see why measure circularity or why measure run out this bit is sold with a ripguard limited lifetime tool break warranty. That's nice. A great deal of care went into making this bit. They, it's a bimetallic um, compound. It's not just made of mild steel. There it says bimetal on the packaging. That means that besides steel they added another metal. In this case they claim to add 8% cobalt in it to make the steel harder, longer lasting. That's nice. They coated it with this white uh, material that's a thermo set coating that you can see on the packaging here. The word thermo set means that, that the coating gets harder when heat is applied to it. Where would the heat come from? Friction while it's making holes. At the moment I have made only three holes and I have all three cookies. Uh, the industry call, calls these plugs but I like to call them cookies just because they are cookie shaped. So uh, a great deal of design went into it. 8% cobalt content and a coating that when, it, when the uh, tool is in operation gets harder instead of gets mushy and gets smeared. So that's what a thermo set coating means. What it does when it's cutting uh, through a hole, uh, a thermoset coating is uh, more useful than a mushy coating or a soft gummy coating is because the gummy coating sticks to the material that's being cut therefore draining your battery and making fewer cuts per battery charge as well as it slows down the drill bit and as it slows down it heats up the drill bit as the teeth heat up they dull faster because the metal gets softer at higher temperature incrementally but it does. So all of this design went into it to make it longer lasting and that's why they are backing it with this ribguard limited lifetime tool brake warranty as well but that also has to do with the tooth design on it I'll get you a close-up after the measurement so none of the design features do any good to you if the finished product is not cylindrical if it's an oval or egg shaped it's going to cause increased amount of friction at the high point in the ellipses, in the high point in the oval. Okay, 
I hope that makes sense and let's check it out for circularity. So we start at zero on the indicator and, and I'm moving it, uh, I'm, I'm spinning the belt spindle on the drill with my uh, left hand here. So I'm moving it a little bit so that's just, that's just me uh, moving the whole stack together. Alright, so I can reset it again to zero, like that little bit is not going to make uh, much of a difference. So let's get started. I made about a quarter turn so far and we are five thousandth of an inch out so far in circularity. And then we have another hump there and then we are running in the opposite direction. This is not my hands, my hands, both of my hands are here. This is a circularity a deviation. Each line on this one is one thousandth of an inch, so that's 30, 34, 35 thousandth in that direction. We're going across the bridge again, spinning it back. The letters are coming up, so we're nearly completed. We have nearly completed the circle. And we're back to zero because we are back in the W. So just before we hit the W, yeah, we are on that side of the needle. All right, so it's 35 in one direction and it was about seven on uh, yay side of the zero. Let's check it again. About, let's see, seven, that's eight in that direction, eight thousandth of an inch. Yeah, about eight. Yeah, I just, it's free hanging now. My hand is not touching it. About, yeah, sure, nine thousand, whatever. That little bit won't make a difference, eight or nine. And there we have 35, we'll call it 35 plus 9. All right, 44 it is. And at the W, we are back at zero, so our measurements are consistent. Let's have this calculator here. So, so um, we'll call it 44 thousandth of an inch out of circular. Yeah, yeah, 35 plus 9, we'll go with that. 44 in terms of metric. Let's times it by 25.4. That's 1.1 millimeter out. So, the when I measure the diameter with this uh, with this caliper, the diameter of it, and this is nominally two and three eighths of an inch or 60 millimeters. I think it's printed on it somewhere there. Now it's upside down and it's white on white, so you can't really see it. Yeah, it's just two and three eighths, 60 millimeters. Here, how about the packaging? That's nice, nice, high contrast. So when I measure it with the caliper, I don't measure 60 millimeters. It's 60 and a half, 60.8, something like that, which is nice. However, because it's out of round about one millimeter, and that means that it uh, that it's it, it it makes a little bit bigger hole than 60 millimeters. Now, I know this is not a precision instrument. This is uh, or a precision drill bit. It's meant to butcher holes into two by four for the electrician or the pipe fitter or the yeah, plumbing. So, uh, however, that's not why I'm measuring it with a uh, with a dial gauge with thousandth of an inch. Again, if it's out of circular, if it's somewhat of a flattened oval shape, if it has a long point somewhere and a short point somewhere, instead of being perfectly circular, it means that the high points will wear out faster or uh, will and will heat up faster. And, uh, and, it's, uh, and it also grabs, and this is a safety concern, that's a point where also it grabs and so uh, you really have to have a strong grip on it. So it's a safety issue as well. Over here where we went across the bridge here was uh, this is for accessing the plug or the cookie. You can put a small piece of stick or something, a nail in here and you can pick out the cookies from the from the uh, bit inside and if I take it off the mount. I can show you something about the teeth design on this one. So you don't see that it's out of round because it's just not possible to see it but you can see the teeth 
have a wavy design set. So this one is sticking out further or is set further out and then the next one is a raker teeth is in line with the rest of the um, side wall and then this one is sticking out again so it's out in line out in line in line out in line possibly out in line uh, that one is looks like it's leaning in and it doesn't matter how I count it I don't quite see a consistent pattern in it. It looks like it's a wave design so some teeth are set in and then some teeth are set out some are in and scoring the inner side of the wall and some are set out so it's not an alternating bevel teeth uh, configurations it looks like some kind of wavy but why, in, why it is so inconsistent with the number of teeth uh, like these two looks look like raker teeth and that one looks like it's scoring the outside outside raker sorry yeah that's a raker and that's outside so I'm not sure how they ended up with this kind of tooth setting so that's one feature the teeth are unevenly set so saw set or tooth set means how much they stick out beyond the side thickness of the side wall the whole saw this side wall is made out of okay so the out here the saw kerf is wider purposefully than the thickness of the metal the side wall is made out of okay so that's good initially I was concerned about this lump of weld material there across the M at Milwaukee there but because the teeth because of the saw set and because the teeth are out towards the side it's not an issue it's not contacting the side wall of the hole that it's cutting that's nice so uh, besides that that I don't understand this tooth pattern here it is sharp it's cutting fine if you look at the cookies that I cut into hardwood even though it's not meant to be a finishing tool and it shouldn't be used as a finishing tool maybe only in a pinch as I mounted some weather instrument on a beautiful hardboard or a hardwood board you can see that the cut quality is really decent and when I come in from two opposite directions they meet in the middle reasonably well so the teeth are sharp even though I don't quite understand this tooth geometry and one more thing about the teeth is uh, and this is why they are backed by this uh, ribguard limited lifetime tooth break warranty is that they claim that each tooth is built with more steel uh, behind the cutting edge for added strength what they have in mind maybe I can grab this thing here is that they have generous amount of steel here this is where the cutting edge is and they have generous amount of steel here to support this cutting edge in a case of a shock load okay I hope that this shape here makes sense and they have a nice size gullet for removing the sawdust so as a as a hole saw for butchering holes into 2x4s or 2x6s it works fantastically well I haven't tested how many how many holes it lasts or uh, how many batteries it lasts or anything such but some of these design features are uh, are really promising and I'm sure they actually work as well uh, however it's got its uh, limitations because because it's constructed out of two pieces of let me just get it off its own mandrel here because it's made out of two pieces of metal one round cookie and then another one flat that's bent to this radius and these are welded here together let me just show you this weld seam there so this is one weld seam and here is another weld seam there because of this construction how this piece of and uh, you can see that's a nice shot there for for that weld because this metal that makes the side wall of the hole saw starts as a flat piece of metal initially and then it's wrapped around this round piece and welded in place here because of this construction it's not 
going to be ever circular enough, enough so don't expect that but the tooth design is nice it's sharp and it's reasonably circular just watch out it might grab here and there it doesn't matter how oval a bit is it will always wobble around enough it will always make a circular hole so but it uh, it might grab so for the amount of money that it cost me about $25 or so at the retailer uh, this is a good looking really promising thoughtfully designed good tool